kia ora, kia ora, kia ora. Welcome to Takatapui Talk. I'm Donald Hollingsworth, and this is Takatapui Talk. Takatapui talk, and this is Nanu. Kia ora, Nanu. No, my hara mai ki tenei. Ko pai i purangi ko Takatapui Talks. Ko Nanu mahau ngā mihi nui kia katoa. Please forgive me, because this is our first time. This is our maiden voyage on yes, an yes, incredible... We're, we're virgins. We're virgins. For the and... first time in, in 20 years. Don't you love our opening music, Nanu? It's great. Yeah. I love it. I love the opening music. I'm really excited about it. So this is our first show, and uh, we've been working on this for about three months now, or even longer. I think we've been talking about it for about a year, haven't we? Mm. About a year. Discussion. Mm. What's it about? Well, I mean, we're Takatapui, we love to talk, yes. and we live here in Tarawa. Mm. So for those of you who don't know, we live in Tarawa, or Rotorua Nui Akahi Matamumai, or Rotorua. 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 Road of Vegas. And for our uh, overseas listeners, and I reckon, I reckon there's going to be a few of them, we, uh, Rotorua is in the Bay of Plenty in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and uh, it's a fabulous place to live. And that's essentially what Takatapui Talk is about. It's our tea, our stories, our fashion, our television, our everything. That's right. Yes. Our tea. Our and team. possibly, like, you know, people say, you know, all tea, no shade. I think there's a bit of shade. <laughs> and I think it's essential because we live in Tarawa. Yeah. And there's lots of shade in Tarawa. <laughs> Do you yeah. know who I'm talking about for your locals? Yes. Uh, it's a different place too, isn't it? So what's, how's your week been? It's been good. It's been yeah. full on. Definitely yeah. been full on. We've had a, um, I work in the housing space, so, or housing support space. So we've been very lucky that uh, a few more whanau have uh, found homes, yes. either through social housing, transitional housing, or rentals, private rentals. It's not the easiest, mm. especially with rent being so high and Alfano being beneficiaries largely. So mm. that's a huge struggle. But we do celebrate these little milestones where Alfano get it and they get into that space. Yes. But yeah, so it's definitely been a busy space, busy week. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of stuff going on. Um, my brother was recently in hospital. He's fine. One less kidney. Oh, yeah. Did he take yours? Well, no, because if he did, he'd just be drunk. <laughs> he'd, he'd, let's be real. He, he would just be drunk. Um, and we did, I did offer a kidney, but he was like, no, not you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else but you. I'll take a stranger. Um, preferably someone who's healthy. Um, but no, he's good. He was just um, mummy. Yeah, of course. And so we went because lots happened in the whanau, and he's not often sick. Mm. So... To hear that he was in, in hospital was quite a huge thing for us. So. And it's interesting, you know, with, with your mahi, with your work, and working in housing like that, and then you have a um, brother who is unwell. So how do you get up every day to be able to, you worry about your brother, you go to your mahi, you worry about your clients, and, and, and they're, they're then trying to find a home. You know, because when you're trying to find a home, it's desperate, it's hard. I mean, I would love to say it's, I meditate and I do mantra, <laughs> and I get up and I say, you know, my mantra. Um, mm. But for me, it's knowing that, Whatever I do, I contribute to helping people. Yes. And if, and if I can do that in the smallest way possible, if I can help one person, mm. that's enough. And it's enough to get me out of bed. Yeah. Um, I mean, and it's not all about the money, because if it was about the money, I'd still be working 10-hour shifts, yes. stuck behind a computer at MSD, which was yeah. not a very healthy environment for me, because no. I love people and I love talking. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I, I think the, the, what, the work that you're doing, you'd be really truly helping people, so you'd be fulfilled. Yeah, we, and, and it's, it's hard. It's not easy because some of our whānau don't know, but that's the great thing about our mahi mm. is that we get to educate them. We get to challenge them uh, to ask questions because, you know, as we know, being Māori, mm. um, we're very shy, mm. especially when we don't know things. And we, we're very quick to kind of play off this whakamā Yes, way of being because we don't want to appear to be uneducated or dumb. So we just we don't we don't ask questions. We just go, yep, so just find mm. the dotted line. Then we end up not knowing about tenancy, about mm. housing, landlords, and all that stuff. And then we end up in debt. Mm. And then we we ignore the debt because we think if we ignore it long enough, mm, it'll go away. It'll go away. Mm. Seven years, apparently. No, it's always there. Yeah, it's always so there. So our, our our mahi is mainly centered around actually bringing that stuff back. Yeah. And saying, look at this. 
this is what your name is attached to. Yeah. This is probably why it's difficult for you to find housing. So yeah. let's make some good changes in your life. May mean some sacrifice. Mm. Uh, and then once you're on a good track, that actually creates better opportunities for you to get into housing. Get into housing. Yeah. So you'll be unpacking a lot of really personal things that people are quite, uh, you know, fucking marsh shy about. Well, I'm, and I'm used to it. I, yeah. I don't know why. I must have this, this sign above my face that says, tell me your life story. Yes. <laughs> Do I want to hear it? No, never. I never, ever want to hear it. I don't, I don't, I don't. No. I don't want to hear your life story. Um or if you're going to tell me, can we keep it to like two minutes? Yeah. <laughs> two minutes is good. Yeah, because I'm trying to find you a house. I'm trying to find yeah, you a home, somewhere to, to live. You. And I know there's stuff to unpack, but I'm not I'm not a clinical psychologist. I'm not a counsellor. I'm no. not a trained person. You yeah. need to go to these people for yes. that. I mean, I can tell you what I think you should do because mm. it's probably these, but I'm not trained in that space, so I don't want to. I don't want to impart information, and mm. then it gets turned on. Like, well, none of it does. Yes, and then exactly. Got trained professional going, what did you just say? Yeah. I was like, well, I told them to get off their ass and sort their shit out. Like, yes. In the nice way. In the nicest possible. Which way. is get off your ass and sort your shit out. Yeah. Well, so um. What do I do? Uh, I, you know, let's let's always what imagine don't you do that. It's probably the best question. <laughs> Sorry, if you know, if you're not familiar, this is Donald Hollingsworth, uh, world-renowned hairstylist, makeup artist, um, producer, um, DJ, DJ, um, um, prostitute. When I'm younger, <laughs> too old now. I do actually joke with a lot of my clients, so. I have a hairdressing salon in Rotorua called My Salon. Which is I, where I go. I thought that uh, my salon, I thought that I wanted to open a salon in Rotorua that was pro Māori. Uh, somebody that actively says, puts their hand up and says, I can look after you. Because Māori, again, are fucking ma, unless you hear or you know about a salon that is specifically for you. You will come, otherwise you just don't. And I have a lot of Manuhiri guests that come to me that may not have had a haircut for twenty years, okay. ten years, nine yeah. years. Oh, I don't like hairdressers. And then they and and then I also get a lot of people that say, "Where's the Maori hairdressers in this town? Mm. There must mm. be one." And that's one of the biggest expectations of well, one of the biggest expectations of living here in Tarawa and also mm. is that because it's such a cultural. Centre. Yes. It's like the cultural capital of, of Aotearoa. Many people may disagree, but you're wrong. Mm. Um, it is here. Um, there is an expectation for Māori ness yeah. to be everywhere. Yeah. And just like what we do in our Mahi for housing, you do the same thing with hairdressing because you educate our whānau about their hair. Yeah. Because most salons don't do that. No. They, they cut your hair, they colour it, they style it, and mm. they send you on your way out to the collector door three hundred dollars. Yes. But they don't actually tell you how to do it. No. So it's easier for you. Mm. But you do that. I know you've done it because you've done. Um, Many of my friends. Yes. Are fine, no. um, <laughs> but for me, they feel so much more comfortable. That's what they've said. I love the fact that we've got these outer areas of Te Arawa. There are these little, tiny little forestry areas, Kawido, Muripara, where you grow up, um, uh, yeah, Whanau Apanui, which is Ota- uh, not, sorry, not Otago, um, so, uh, Portiki, uh, Portiki Whakatane, yeah. and these people come. They come, not just Tauranga, these other people, they come. They want to um, they want to be looked after, and I love it when they come that far. I mean, I, I think I told you the other day I had these two sisters that come to me from Murupara, yes. and they were leaving after having their hair done, and there were a couple of people out there, oh, girl, where you been? Oh, I've been in there. Your hair looks really good. Yeah, go and see that fella inside. So they come in, he brings his wife in, he goes, oh, can you look after my uh, my wife? And I went, of course. She came in. I chopped her hair off. We um, gave her a new colour. They were so excited. Yeah, to her eyebrows. Um, and it, we had a, she had a lovely time. And people experience the salon or my salon the way that I would really like them to, which is coming together. And I've had the opportunity. I have mothers that come with their two daughters and they come over from Tauranga or they'll come from Whakatane or a Portiki mm. and they travel a long way but then they come here they do their shopping it's like when people come from Ruatahuna or from the hills mm. they come here they fit me into their day I have uh, Koroa and Komatua that come here um, they come in a bus 
Oh, they come on a yeah. Tuesday. Yes. Yes. They have a hui. I make them a cup of tea. I don't even have to talk because they get to catch up. Yes. So I get their hair done and then they go to pack and save, have do their shopping and then go home again. Mm. And it's a great part of their life. And I just love it. Because, you know, I come from the city. Yes. And that's uh, one of the... Most wonderful things about the service that I offer here, because you know I'm essentially serving people, so it's exciting to hear about that. That that's your fulfilment too. We're not in it for the money, you know. And people, what I love about me, and I do have a pricing system that isn't necessarily like everybody else's, because I want people to feel they can afford to come regularly. And that's the, the once again, fuck a man. Yeah, fuck a that, that, that space of fuck a man. Mm. I want this, but I can't afford two hundred dollars. Yeah. I can't afford three hundred dollars to get yes. my hair done. Mm. Like my sister, my sister was originally going to a really well-known yes. hairdressers here in Tōtsuroa yes. that I Karen, I'll tell you about that one day, Yes, because um, they deserved it. Um, but, you know, she was paying close to $300, $400 mm. for a simple cut colour yes. blow wave. Yes. And then all this product, all this retail product that she didn't end up using. Mm. Then she came to you, got the same kind of thing. Yeah. And for like half that. Half the price, that's and, right. But what did it for her is that she felt... Cared for, yeah. She felt respected and loved. Mm. You know, what I mean, like you said, if it was about the money, you could have been back working in, in film and television. Yeah, that's right. For many, many, yes. many, many thousands of years. Well, I could also charge the prices that other salons are charging. I also know my market really well because I have been in the industry for like thirty-five years. It was like when I was in Sydney, my haircuts were my haircuts were one hundred and forty dollars. My average bills would be four, five hundred dollars. Yeah. But that's Sydney, and I didn't want to come here and think that nobody could afford to come to me. I would never want people to, to come to me. I, mean, I think about my pricing with time, you know, because, you know, your lovely sister, she doesn't have a lot of hair. <laughs> and, no, um, moment, you, no. you know, so, um, you know, you get through it a little faster. Mm. But if I've got someone that's in the salon for three or four hours, then, of course, you're going to quote a high price because they hear longer. You're using more colour. The hair is a lot thicker. Um, and the thing that, what's really special about your sister is she has the opportunity to bring her husband with her. And he, so her and her it. husband come they together they enjoy the to have their hair done. They just yeah. feel so special and so looked after. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm there longer. Yes. <laughs> I'm there for like three, four hours and I'm good. And uh, we have to thank them, actually, because they've really helped. They've, they have sponsored us to get started sponsored on our... some of our equipment. So thank you. Big yes. shout out to Man and Trek from What's, What's Up Couriers. Yes. Um, yeah. We love mm. yous. We do. We love you. Thank goodness for both of you. Um, so that's exciting. Now people know a little bit about, bit more about us now. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah. Mm. I mean, we both come from, we also both come from the entertainment industry. Yes, we and do. We've spent many, many years in that. Yeah. So in my spare time, when I'm not trying to educate people about housing and budgets and sorting out your debt and stuff, <laughs> I... Um, I perform. You, perform. you know I perform. Yes. I've done many, many times in my face for the yes. things. Yes, you're a Dancing, diva. Uh, do musical theatre. Yeah. Basically, uh, if you have money to pay me, I will figure out what I can do to entertain you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can host an evening. I can you host can an evening. You can pull out a vocal. <laughs> I've even done bingo once. I was terrible at it. And I felt sorry for the whanau, Chin Tauranga, who, who had to endure me. Because I don't have that up the road, 99, or two fat ladies, 88. Yeah, yeah. I could not. Because I've never played house. Oh. So I was just told to sort of take over, and I'm going, one, six, <laughs> sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're there's those bylines, eh? Uh, uh, 16, um, 16. Yeah, down the road. Down the road. 84. 80. <laughs> <laughs> Glory hole, number seven. <laughs> Double zero. Double. I know. <laughs> yeah. But you know, and, and, but I mean, I've done it. I've done many things. I've hosted many things. I've performed in many places. Yeah. Uh, and coming up, I am hosting a, a beautiful event in Topo. Oh yeah. Which is about an hour's drive from here, called Hashtag Fabulous. Okay. And it's for the Topo Hospice right. Society. So basically, I'm hosting alongside a well-known camp queer mm. Tucker. Tucker. <laughs> Tucker. Oh, Miss Robina. She's larger than life. She's larger than life, I tell you. She's like, she's built like a brick shit house. She is. I mean, sorry, a rugby player. Yeah. Or a police officer. Not sure. Mm. Um, 
But um, yeah, so this gonna be fun. We mm. went to the past. So my my only thing was like, could you, could you please make my microphone louder than hers because she's got a big mouth. She does have a big voice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, in that type of environment, how do you prepare for something like that? Um, my my biggest thing is I don't know as long as I know what the cope up is, yes. as long as I know the people that I'm working with, if, especially if it's an event which is a fundraiser, who the sponsors are, who the other people who are contributing time and energy to this thing, that helps me host. Because yeah. if these, I mean, you know, sometimes there's always technical issues, sound issues, um, songs don't play because mm. of the wrong version, and people have to find them. So I use this information to kind of fill that space. I mean, I love ad living, mm-hmm. but. If I have something a little bit more structured to it, then I can use that to branch into stuff, yes. into, into other things. Um, but my whole thing is, it has always been about, and I've always done this since I first started performing, was acknowledge those who are working behind the scenes, mm-hmm. those who are contributing to the event, um, those who are participating in sponsors, anything like that, because they, they deserve their flowers. Mm. They deserve their flowers. And, their, and, their and the acknowledgement. Yeah, the acknowledgement. Yeah, absolutely do. And it it's goes really a long important. way. And it gets <clears> more gigs. Just mm. saying. It does. Well, then, you know, you become known for that. And then they're like, yeah, let's, let's, let's get Nunu to um, yeah. host this. Let's get Nunu really to. She's really well spoken and she yeah. does a tereo. Yeah, she well, does she a tereo. She Yeah, and she does a waiata. <laughs> yeah, she does waiatas. Oh, waiatas. And I sing live. Everyone thinks I'm a drag queen. Um, I wish I was. <laughs> one, I don't have that much money, and two, I'm not really good at lip syncing, but no. I can sing. Why I would sing. you need to lip sync? Well, yeah. yeah. And have you ever lip synced? Once. And it was... That was very difficult because yeah. I was—I mean, I was still singing anyway. Yeah, you were singing along anyway. <laughs> you know, I was just like I wasn't—I wasn't just mouthing words. I was literally just singing the whole thing, and it was fun. It was mm. great. I mean, I did enjoy it, but I was like, I love the fact that my point of difference as a performer, especially within the rainbow space, is I can sing live. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, but I do use drag aesthetics. I yeah. love using drag aesthetics, like like big earrings and yeah. big hair and big shiny sequiny costumes. Like, get me all the glamour. Mm, that's the glamour. That's right. Mm. Uh, and for someone like me that doesn't can't sing as well as you, I do try to though. You can sing. I do, you know, I mean, <laughs> I said this to um, lovely Rokawa the other night actually, uh, having the opportunity to go to karaoke with you. And uh, as soon as we arrive there, you pull a note out. You know, people are on their knees. But someone was crying. <laughs> Who was crying? That was my niece. <laughs> she hasn't seen me for ages. Yeah. And that was quite a surprise. Because yeah. I, didn't, I didn't expect her to be here. As soon as she broke out to a vocal, broke yeah. out in a vocal, she started, you know. Well, she said to me, she's putting me outside. She's like, I heard, I heard the song. And I thought, is that, is that my aunt? It is. Is that my aunt? No. <sighs> And then, yeah, what was the oh, track? Then I trained a Georgia. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Was, and then I decided at the end, and they let me sing last. Everything, everybody wants to rule the world. That was good. Yeah, I just sort of think, oh, well, you can sing along. But um, lovely Dokara just finished singing, and I was just astounded was at her incredible voice. Oh, yes. Yes. I and she I still remember her saying to me, Mama, how do I, how do I hit these notes? And how do oh, because that's my hit question. These and I said to her, I said, look, for me, as long as I can hear it in my head, yeah. I can position it in my voice. Yes. Sometimes it doesn't quite, I can't sustain it for very long mm. because of years of smoking. Yes. But um, I can hit the note and then I can bring it down as long, as softly as I can so yeah. it's not so much a jarring experience. But yeah. leaps and bounds, oh. leaps and bounds of Roko. If you're not familiar with Roko, Roko's one of our babies, mm. one of our rainbow babies. Yes. And um, she is Absolutely amazing. And she runs her own business. It's mm. a kuziyoki, so it's like a quiz night slash carry karaoke night mm. um, with her and her mum. Yep. Um, she's one of our very beautiful trans women who's been very lucky to have Fano that are very supportive. A hundred percent. hundred and fifty percent. Her mum is just her <clears throat> biggest advocate. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just came along because I was just a member of the community that, mm. you know, was in the same space that she was in, which is an honour. It's an honour to have someone that I can impart my advice in my experience too. So would she say she you were her mother? Yeah, I'm her yeah. mama. She calls me mama. Lovely. Mm. Lovely. Yeah. Would she bet you be your only child? No, I've got a few. Have you? Yeah. I, Who says that? No, I didn't want them. <laughs> no, I didn't I didn't want the kids. So let's understand what 
What, being a mother is in the Takatapu community. Well, see, I always thought being a mother, like, because I have a mother. I yeah. have a drag mother. Yes, Even you though do. I don't do drag and I'm not a drag queen, yeah, yeah. I belong to a drag house because we're all performers. Yes. And this person took me and my, well, took me the time in my current state mm. and taught me to elevate my looks. Mm. So makeup, hair, styling, all of that stuff, yeah. accessories. Um, she taught me to be responsible for my brand because as a performer, you are responsible for your brand. Yes. And so she and she, oh, she was a mother of a drag house. Mm. And um, she belonged to a well-known society, uh, whānau called the Southside Sisters. Oh. Um, from way back in the day. Would she let, are we allowed to say who she yes. is? Yes, she doesn't like being called mother, but yes, Chanel Da Vinci. Oh, thank you, Chanel. Yeah, Chanel Da Vinci. Everyone wants her to be their mother, and like we, we're quite protective of hers. We're like, no, go away. Um, <laughs> but then she created her own whānau. No. Yeah. Because Southside Sister, which is a drag house, was created on very, very strict rules. Mm. So no drinking, no drugs, no smoking. I love that. While you're in I gigs. love that. I love that. Before you're doing gigs, you wait till after. Yeah. And then um, you turn up. In yep. drag, you leave in drag. drag. You don't get out of drag halfway through. You don't leave drag. As, you don't leave the, the event as a boy because it destroys the illusion. Yes. If after that you want to drink and have fun, you get off. You get out of your drag. Mm. You go and do whatever. Mm-hmm. Also, rem- remembering you represent a whanau. Mm. Um, karakia was always done before and after each each performance or mm-hmm. each set. Mm-hmm. Um, even with uh, kaitahi together, korirotahi, um, choreography. One of the biggest things I remember her hearing about from some of the other sisters and brothers was that when she would teach them to lip sync and perform, um, she sat them down in chairs wow. and made them sit on their hands and said, now, perform this number to me without anything else, no hands, no body, just your face. Oh, Chanel. Because if you cannot sell a song to me yeah. with just your face, yeah. you probably shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, yeah. And that, oh, that stuck with me. I thought, wow, yeah. yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Because it is all in the facial, especially when you've got blocked eyebrows and mm-hmm. they're kind of higher than you would be. You would have to over ex- and emote or, or express yeah. for them to make sense. And yeah. that, was, that stuck with me forever. Ever. That's uh, that's like part of a Bible, really, isn't it? Mm. It's like um, drag or performing 101, lip syncing 101. Yeah, you yeah. should be able to sell everything in here. Yes. Otherwise, then you don't always necessarily need to move around and do arms and mm. point fingers. Point fingers. And, you know, whatever else people do these days. I see a lot of pointing fingers and thrashing movements and mm. stuff. And I'm like, but I miss the context of the well, of the of the song or even the co-papa of the song. Mm. Um, another another very important rule of Southside Sisters, which then came into our house, which is the House of Da Vinci, named after her, was if you cannot perform your drag to Fano and children, you probably shouldn't be doing this anyway, mm. because your show should be family friendly. Because it's about education. Yes, it's about educating people that we're entertainers. Mm. There's nothing sinister behind that. No. We're not, you know, there's no hidden agenda. We just want to entertain in the best way that we can. Mm. Um. And if you can do that to children, awesome, because they love being entertained. They absolutely do. They love do. seeing people in costumes. They love the colour, the yeah, movement. Yeah, the colour, the dance, yeah. the music and everything is such a, a great thing for them to, to see, especially when being Māori. Mm. When, when you're a Māori child or a Pacifica child and you see your own people yes. performing and having the best time of yeah. their lives, you think, I can do that. Well, that's also very important. Like when I was growing up in this, I was a seventies child, and I grew up with um, drag performers on television. They were on Saturday night big shows. You know, they were Danny Larue, they were Diamond mm, Lil, mm. and you know, for a little boy like me, when I saw that sort of, you know, because they represent us so beautifully. Yeah, they are performing, but you know, I was like, oh, my eyes were so big, and then I became a teenager, and then people like David Bowie. Um, Boy George. Boy George. You know, and what's wrong with it? The colour that we got to see. And it opened our eyes and we went searching for it. And then we have now, everything is like, well, that's wrong. This should be reading. It's dangerous. It's it's dangerous. Sexualising children. Sexualising children. That's why we are in it. Drag is not a crime. Drag queens are not trying to get to your children to sexualise them or anything like that. They're not. Get that stupid put it all out of your brain. It's not mm. even what it's about. No. I mean, you, it's funny, you want to sit there and target drag queen or drag performers mm. for this kind of behaviour, but you're willing to let your child sit on some seedy little Santa Claus in a mall that you Correct. have no idea who he is, yes. where he's from. Yep. Even clowns that get invited to birthday parties. What's behind this makeup? Mm. There are people behind these, you know, behind behind the colour and the glamour, and often 
they're whānau oriented, especially if they're Māori and Pacifica, mm-hmm. they're whānau oriented Always. people who want to share their gift and make people feel good. Yeah. Not sexually. No. They just want people to have a good time, mm. leave feeling a little bit better about existing in this world that's constantly trying to sit there and tell everyone what to do and how to be and, and, all, and who to love and all this stuff. Drag mm. queens are not predators. No. And neither is trans women. No. Or trans men. Mm. You know, and this is where we go to something a little, you know, this sort of ideology that's literally started to hit our shores here now, which has been frustrating for me, really. It's just come up. Well, I know it's been coming up for a little while, like bubbling underneath, but why, why, why when, it, when it hit us, I thought, why? Mm. Why? How has it become a political statement? And, and when did we start letting people from outside our country... Yeah, decide. ...take or decide yeah. how we should be thinking? Yeah. One thing I've loved about being growing up in Aotearoa was that we think for ourselves. So, we may hear your point of view and think, oh, I can, it's a bit mm. dark, but that's not how I feel. Mm. Um, it was like with the Parker Posey stuff that mm. happened up in Auckland. Yes, um, you know, everyone was worried about her coming to spread her hate. The thing is, we spoke to many Māori women. Yes. Many Māori aunties, nans, yep. and stuff, who were like, well, I can think for myself. Yeah. Yeah. I have my own thoughts, and I know what I want. Mm. And it has nothing to do with her. So she can talk all she wants. Mm. And this is actual kōrero from, from nannies, queers. People um, that are sitting in my yeah, chairs, mama. too, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah in her like, chairs. I don't need, and I don't need mm. someone who doesn't know who I am to come and tell me how to think. Yeah, because I know how to think. Yeah. And I'm a... Okay with you coming to the Fari Paku or the bathroom with me because I need my hair done. Yeah, I need to. I need you to tell me if my lipstick's on or yeah. if it's on my teeth or if, if my never, outfit is okay. Never once have I ever had anybody react badly to it. It's funny. It's really weird. Mm. It's, it's well. I mean, I remember growing up in Mutupuru. There was we didn't have many. I didn't have many sort of people to look up to. But there was one person, beautiful, beautiful trans woman, um, Frida, and she was as I remember her. She had. Everyone's kids. Mm. She looked after everyone's children. Mm. She became their nanny, their auntie, and yeah. she would cook, yeah. see, you know, clean. Yeah. They would be in her house. Yeah. She would look after them like they were her own children because she couldn't have them. Yeah. And that's that's what it, I think that's what it is from with a with a Māori worldview. Mm. In terms of and the Pacifica. Oh, so yes, Māori yeah. and Pacifica. Yeah. Um, is that they will look after the children. Yes. Which was a role back in the day anyway. Yes, it was a role Prior back to colonization, in the day. to colonisation, they looked yeah. after the children because while the families are out fighting mm. or doing whatever, who is looking after the babies? Mm. These beautiful people who are of beyond the veil and within the, you know, beyond the veil and outside the veil, so... But loved and respected. Mm. And, you know, there'll be people that'll be listening from overseas. In the Pacifica, we have, um, in Tonga, who do we have? Whakaleiti. Whakaleiti. Uh, in Samoa, you have Whawhawhine. Mm. Um, and, and they're an Fiji, integral part. In Hawaii, in, in Tahiti, is yeah. Mahu. Mahu. And we have, um, which is Whakawahine. Or I think it's Ira, Ira Wahine, Ira, Ira Kane, and Ira, Ira Fiti, Ira which is non binary. Yes. Um, but you just this corner was it's, it's interesting because I don't, I, I've never seen sinister activity. No, from no. From our trans community, they just yeah. want to just you, like if they're going to the funny paku, guess what, people? They want a mimic. Mm. Yeah. Or a tickle, and if it's a tickle, don't say yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like they just want to go to this. They're not yes. worried about the person next door to them. No, and, and actually, they're probably more fearful about being in that space. Anyway, because they don't want that. And they don't want to make people uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, more I mean, so. I, for, I, for years, I hated being on Marae because we've got such gentrified spaces in Marae. Mm. And I get it. I understand. There are spaces for men. There's, there's money that men do and women do and all this stuff. But going using the whare paku, it was really hard for me because I didn't want to make, not so much for my own comfortability, but I didn't want to make other people uncomfortable, uncomfortable. with my presence because I just wanted to be there to enjoy the whanaungatanga, yeah. um, the, the mātauranga that we were, if it was and things like that. So I would purposely get up, be the first to get up, so I could shower first before mm-hmm. anyone else, yes. um, or I'd be the last one to go to sleep. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be in that space while other people were in there for fear that I would make them uncomfortable. Comfortable. Yeah. So it was a lot of so I, you know, I'd be like out like a light, and then up at like five o'clock in the morning before even the names mm. to yeah. have a shower, get myself ready, put a face on, make myself look presentable, and mm. then. Probably stay awake for the rest of the morning, sitting at the tables for the aunties and uncles yes. who, are, who are about to come and do breakfast. But the ideology that even publicly, like if I went to a public pool, a swimming pool, I'm conscious of it too because I have a, an, 
you know, I have a what because you know I'm, I'm being takatapu or being homosexual. I have a, a certain effeminacy to me, and I don't want any father looking at me. For and me. there's an automatic so I think thing, right? it, it affects me too. Yeah, yeah because, yeah. because you're so openly free with who yes, you are, yeah. that then creates an, an yeah. image in, in men's minds of oh, mm. he's coming to look at my penis, my or my little son, oh, or my child. No, yeah, no. You just want to go and relieve yourself. Yes, or get yeah, changed yeah, to go for changed. a swim. Yes, I don't yeah. go to swimming. I don't go to public swimming pools. I don't because of this. Um, and if I had to use a, a public toilet, I will opt often for the disabled toilet. Yes. Because it's just easier. Yeah. It's easier that way. And if, you know, and there's this talk about, oh, we should give them their own toilets. Yes, please. Yeah. Can we have our own toilets. Yes. And they'd be like, right, you look for like lights around the mirrors and, mm. you know, a bit of soft ambient music playing mm. and a massive lot. So no one comes in to sit there and target us. Yeah, and can we have our own sport events? <laughs> can we have, oh, you why know? Not? Yeah. Why not? Why not have your own sports events? And I, yeah, I have a, you know, a, a, a few young trans uh, nieces and nieces that come to me that, that I've known for a long time. They love indoor net, they love netball, men's they're netball, because they're fantastic at it. And they're affected by it too. Mm. You know, like concerned. They never, they don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable too. They just want to go and play netball yeah. and I'm play it really well. And they're also really good at it. It has nothing to do with sexualization of no. anyone. No, yeah. Like, and in fact, you know, debaucherous behavior is from who? Yeah. Mm. Let's be honest. I only really brought it up because it's starting to come through in our bloody election that's know, happening. And people are like, oh, you know, trans people are trying to sit there and, 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 and target our children, our little girls. Mm. Excuse me? Yeah. Um, maybe to teach them how to do the hair. Yeah. you haven't. And I want, to, I want my daughter to feel safe. What, why would she want, to, why would she feel unsafe? You know, I, mean, I guess, I guess given the climate at the time, there is the other side of the coin where there may be cross dressers or people who do target young people who are using the excuse that they identify as female yes. to get into these spaces. So there is a, there is a concern. Yeah. But it's not us. It's not the trans community. It's not. No, it's, it's not. not. It's not the drag queens. No. It's not. It's and there are, different you know, trans people, people, our trans brothers and sisters, they are the like, 0.1% of our population. Why are we picking on the small yeah. guys? And why are we killing them? You know, seriously, the reaction that people have, it happens here too, which is... I think the worst thing is, you know, because um, there are men out there and women who will, who will court or, yeah. or accost... Our trans whanau. and mm. because trans people often, and even our, our takatapui, the, the wider takatapui whanau, also grow up in a sense of isolation and loneliness. And so they they'll do. go for the, the very first thing that presents some sort of sense of belonging or intimacy. Mm. Yes. Um, but then it becomes a fatality, mm. the potential to. Um, not so much here in New Zealand, but no. it's not far no. off. It's not far off because this has started to, the ideology is starting to come through. Now, when it's getting, when it's hitting politicians and they're running with it closer to it in election, I mean, that's just wrong. Mm. Leave us alone. There are so many things that are so much more important to our country. The yeah. cost of living. Health. Health. Housing. Housing. Jobs. Jobs. You know, even all these jobs are there for everyone. Yeah. Oh, you know, uh, we should all be given the same opportunities. It doesn't work because the opportunities aren't the same because they're given to you first. Or they're designed with a certain demographic in mind, mm. not everyone. Okay. So we can't preach this one nation kind of thing, mm. one people kind of thing. When we've been trying that for the last how many hundreds of years mm. and it has worked. Yeah. It's like we don't want to take anything away from anyone else. We just want the chance to enjoy that as well. Yes. Yeah. And my quality has always been my 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 opinion, just my opinion, is that some people are too scared of us getting ahead because they think that we're going to do to them what they did to us. This is my fakaro. Not anyone else's. You can cover me if you want to. Oh, it's pretty real though. But I mean, it's it's definitely thing. It's like don't be threatened by us. We just want a chance. Mm. We want to share. And he was like, "You had a share." No, no, we didn't. From the beginning, and the system has been designed. Without us in mind. Mm. It's been designed to work against us. To work against and us. And we've been like, yeah. okay, yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it. We'll yeah, we'll and do then it we try and then all of a sudden, like, oh, the crime rate has, has risen. Why has the crime rate yeah. risen? It's not because it's because with people us. are starving. Yes. People have no homes. They mm. have no money. Why? Nothing to do with trans people going to use the, the, the their bathroom. The whatipaku. Yeah, the whatipaku. It's nothing to do with that. Yeah, it's like, mm. don't focus on trans people in bathrooms. Focus on the bigger things. Mm. 
which is housing, unemployment. Housing. Yeah, yeah, the desperateness of people education. now. Education. Yeah, education. Um, we're actually quite good at educating people, you know, and, uh, you know, we're quite actually quite good to have amongst... Oh. If I could do it 24-7, that would be my dream job. I love sharing information to help people. Yes. To help them realise this stuff. And not just Māori people, like just, you know, mm. like anyone. Because mm. we're all, you know, we're all feeling the sun of the times. We're all feeling the struggles and, and it's all real. It's all real. But, I mean, if I can help you just switch your mindset. Because quite often we have this very big, huge thing. Like, oh, it's the government's fault or it's the... Mm. IRD's fault. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. It's, it's MSD's like, fault. Kari, your name is on it. Yeah. Thing. It's your fault. Yeah. And yeah. what are you doing? We do have to start owning things. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. When I learn to own things, it just, it's like an epiphany that you have when you're like, you know, like, wow, that's, uh, that's made so much more sense now. You do have to own things. And when you've owned it and you've processed it and you've worked with somebody on it, Gosh, your world is so much more open to change. I, I kind of stepped away from my father and I kind of ran off. What did run off? No, I did. I did. Um, because I couldn't explain how I was feeling mm. and what I was experiencing because I didn't know. Mm. And I didn't know how to explain it in a way that they would understand. They would already have preconceived ideas and not through no fault of their own. No. Just lack of education. Yeah. So I spent time with doing my thing. The way I thought it was was good. I made so many dumb mistakes. I did mm. so many stupid things. But how do we learn unless we make well, mistakes? That's right. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Was like, you know, you're quite wise, but I've, I've fucked up a lot. Yes. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. So and I've learned to never repeat them. Um, but I had to go do that to find who I was and to kind of accept that mm. and then bring that back to my whānau. Because people need to understand that mm. too. Why do you think it keeps going wrong? Because you'll keep doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, but it's the definition mm. of insanity. Yes. Doing the same thing. Same again. thing over and over again. <laughs> Expecting a different result. Did you find your world opened up a lot more when you met Chanel, your mother? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, because I was still kind of, I think I was still trying to find myself. And I was in family bar, I think it was. And she just finished performing. She saw me amid a crown. She said, she goes, it was a full house. She goes, but I see you stuck out. And I was like, because I looked really awkward. <laughs> so, no, you just, there was a different Modi coming from me. Oh, that's I divine. Like, I like her. I want to meet her. Yeah. And so, yeah, she did definitely help that. But I had to, a lot of it I had to do myself. I had yeah. to think, okay, I think this is how I feel. Mm. I don't know. Mm. But we'll go with it. Um, and then through that, made some really dumb decisions, made some really stupid people um, that didn't help me. Help you at all. <laughs> but you thought they would because they look good. I thought they would and I wanted to help them because I, then I realised I was helping them more than they were helping me. Yes. And and that's okay because that, that was what they were going through and that's fine. I've also learned a lot of acceptance. Like, mm. you know, people I, I don't speak or interact with anymore and it's not that I don't like them. Mm. It's just that I'm not in that space. I'm not in a space where that is even a possibility now. Yes. It's too much energy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting older now. Yeah, that's true. We're all getting older. I'm like 28. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm 37, yes. Yeah. Um, but I just don't have the energy to keep doing that. Mm. Um, even social interaction is huge for a performer. And as you would know, because mm. you need a certain level of energy to go. Like, <gasps> to perform, yeah. And when it's finished, Great. it's over. Thank you for coming, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's hard. And then getting back after a performance, you just... You just Mm. And I don't cut myself off. I just keep myself very close with a few friends mm -hmm. to recover and to get back to mm. me get and back recharge. To it. So you can recharge. I'm not, I'm not being a snob. I'm not being antisocial. I'm no, just, no. I I'm seem just to recharge trying first. to recharge so I can yeah. do it this again. There's not a performer that I haven't worked with that hasn't is, isn't that way because that's just exactly how it is. Okay. You need yeah. that time to recover, to recoup, to bring it back up again so that you can perform the next time. There's not and my anybody... process is often <coughs> just lock myself in my room, close all the curtains and just watch... Um, stuff on YouTube, watch people trying to sing on YouTube. Yeah. Or movies, you know, just watching mm. movies or, or, or singing songs just to get me back to a space where I'm okay to mm. then go, right, I can now face the world. To then perform for it, mm. for the I can now be this, because it's branding, right? So yes. I've always been responsible for my brand. Mother Chanel said to me, when you debut, however you are, is how they're going to remember you forever. forever. Yes. So yes. if you're going to be a See You Next Tuesday, yeah. You will always be remembered yes, as Tuesday. Next Tuesday. And that's why developing this podcast, we want to do the right things. We put your best foot forward straight away. Mm. 
For me, when I was probably 14, I met, I had one of my best friends that I knew from like five. Uh, she, um, um, you know, she came out as trans when she was probably 15. Mm. And we used to hang out, obviously, and we were very close, our Cherie. And we met three, she met a lot of other Māori trans women. I would have been 15. And they were the most incredible um People for me, I felt whole, I felt together, and the humour, and the laughing, and the, the accept, and the realness. The honesty, yeah, and then, the, and, and then, you know, when people say, well, you know, when you hang out with us, you, they, we're teaching you to be gay. We're teaching you to be takatapui. They would always say to me, though, because like, I was carrying a little bit of weight then. They're like, oh, you know, if you put a bra on, you know, you'd get a cleavage. And I would laugh, mm. but never once did I want to, never once did I think yeah, I was never, trans. Yeah, was never once did I thought I was trans. I thought I might have been um, a trans when I was a little boy because I was so effeminate. I even had a period where I thought, well, I am a girl and I'm going to sit on the toilet all the time. Mm. And I did do that. But as I got older, I grew into the six foot four frame. Boys who grow up to be straight often do that too. Yeah, correct. Mm. Yeah, they do. And like, you just got to let people be. You've got to let kids be. And that's the thing about my parents, both my mother and my father, they just let me be. Just they let me about, be. I love about a Māori worldview. Yeah. Pre colonisation, parents did not dictate the path of no. their children. No. They would watch the child to do whatever, and to figure out wherever they gravitated yes. to, and wherever they went to naturally was where they would then encourage them to go to excel at. Yes. It wasn't about, you're going to be a this, you're yeah. going to be a warrior because you're this child. They may not have had those inclinations. They no. might be more attuned to or have an affinity with horde culture or the, or the environment. Mm. So then why would you force someone to do something that's not going to come to them naturally? Mm. Where you can build someone else, like if, if a young girl picked up a baraka and swing it around, mm-hmm. and, you know, yeah. do that, then there's clearly an affinity with with that, that. Space. yeah, yeah, and, and just let them do it. Yeah. Don't stop them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cow Cafeto was a beautiful space for, for if children. You, if you want to wear a dress, wear a dress. Yes. If you want to wear um, stubbies, wear stubbies. I mean, my dad but, saying, if you want to do this, do it well. Yeah, do it well. Do it properly. Mm. And I was like, okay. I have lots of stories when I was like four. Dad would come home from work. Dad was a forestry worker. I loved my sister's tutu because she didn't like ballet. I would put it on. I'd wear a scarf. I'd have a push chair of babies, like dolls. Dad would come home from the forestry so bus. I wanted to be a mum when I was four. I wanted to be a mum. And, and then I Dad would get off, off the forestry bus with all these other forestry workers, and I'd have the push chair and I'd see him. And, Dad, Dad, and I'd wave out to him. He'd be like, oh, hello, son, how are you? And then I'd oh, go and hug him. Boy. Yeah, and I'd oh, have a... Son. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. my son. I think he said I was his son for the other forestry workers. But they would look, but no one would say anything because they would see the love of a father and a, and a child. You know, and that's what it was. Maybe yeah. My dad was... He was here with He never said, take that tutu yeah. off. Girls don't wear... Boys don't wear tutus. He never said that to me. You never said that to me, you know, and I'm sure your father, you well, know. Well, it was funny because, I mean, I was very, very, very flamboyant, very Germanic, very, very, you know, fluffy. Yeah. Flighty. Yeah, fluffy. Um, yeah. But, I mean, unlike you, I didn't want to be a mum. Mum in marriage was never a thing for me. I wanted to be like Wonder Woman, <laughs> Chitara from the Thundercats. Yeah. I wanted to be like this, you know, this, this badass, ass-kicking yes. um, heroine because they inspired me, mm. their strength, um, which is often toned down because the woman mm. was was like, no, we can be these people. And I felt so, it felt such like, it felt like a natural space for me to be in. Mm. Just. And it did, it feels natural. Powerful yeah. warrior, warrior princess kind of kind of state. I mean, I Xena and stuff. Um, so, and I, and I remember playing, so we'd do like little role play games as you do with kids, yes. you know, as different heroes and stuff. And I'd always take these roles and the boys around were okay with it. Mm. It was never an issue mm. until we got older. I mean, we'd like. And then it becomes an issue. School. Yeah. I mean, like, or well, like later years in primary because we didn't do that in high school. But um, that's when the separation stuff that happened with mm. my friends. So I was like, okay, I'm not. I'm not where they're at. No. And I'll never be where they're at. And I, I think being Takatapu is a gift from God. Oh, I've always thought that. There is definitely a... Because we a look at things so differently. Yeah. Very much similar. If you've seen the story about the history of Māori, very much the same thing. So we've got Whatsukura Māori Kura, Whatsukura Male Essence, Whata Māori Kura, Female Essence. Um, when a child is born, if they're going to be male, it'll be Whatsukura. Mm-hmm. Female Māori Kura. And then sometimes every now and then you have people like us. Mm. Where both essences come down and the child is then 
blessed, twice blessed. Mm, twice I blessed. Think, I think there are two, the two phrases are ma kakura and faturei kura. Yes. I'm not certain about the history or the mm. behind each of those kupu, but I have heard them spoken about many, many um, real Māori exponents and, mm. and, and historians, people who speak on our culture mm -hmm. um, pre-colonial times. So to hear that, and mm. to know that that was there, mm. it's, it's, it's an honour. It's, yeah. it's, it's beautiful. You know, it we do, honor. we have a legacy. I also know of a, a friend, sorry, who said they were raised to be aware of people like us. Mm. And that if, we're, if they were in that space, with, if they shared space with people like us, yes. to nurture, encourage and protect. And protect. Because we are designed to look after our parents. Yeah. The elderly, yeah, the elderly children, our children, keepers of the ancient yes. knowledge, so more tea tea, um, whakapapa, mm -hmm. uh, any old incantations often were that 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 role. Mm -hmm. um, record keepers, mm. custodial librarians, if, mm. if you may, with actively books. involved in hapu, mm. actively involved, a really integral part, is mm. almost as important as the tupuna, you know. Very much so. Yeah. Very revered on both sides. Mm. And people just need to know that more, don't they? They really do. And just to realise that we're not scary. No, we're definitely not scary. Have we gone over time? No, we were amazing. I just thought I might play our, our closing track because, you know. Because it's great. Yeah. How beautiful was that? It was great. It was so, I was so yeah. nervous about the whole thing. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't even know what you were nervous about. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I just wanted people to hear our stories. Yes. And I think that and it's really, really important. We deliver it differently. Yeah. We watch. I watch so much television. I watch the way our shows are. Mm. And it's not, yeah. And I hope that you've got tunes in. I hope you get a nice, beautiful audience. Um, we'd love to have you. Thank you. Coming, um, we welcome you back anytime. Um, please be safe and look after each other out there. Yes, out there. Love you all. I'm glad you've enjoyed our first episode, and there's gonna be many more. Yes. Thank you for joining in on Takatu. We talk Takatu. Kaha, Maru. Kaha.